And so I'm reaching down between the mattress and the wall, trying to plug this in. Can't see it. Yeah. In irate the entire time, the entire <laughs> time I'm doing it. At the at the end, I'm like, I hope my laptop is never charged because yeah. this. All right. Episode ninety fucking nine. Bleep out the fucking. God damn it. <laughs> episode 99 of the fair enough podcast bob in detroit michael in chicago jack in detroit uh episode 99 one more until the triple digits jack's got some things in the works it sounds like so um expect some weird stuff for that one uh the great one wayno oh almost almost a red wing Wayne Gretzky at one point before he went to Los Angeles. Uh, JJ Watt watched him on the Pat McAfee show today. He's always just a delight. He was wearing a rocket power shirt. <laughs> he was wearing, dude, the other day he was wearing a TC Williams shirt like the uh, from remember the Titans. This dude just got oh, all yeah. the good, all the he has good great shirts, t-shirts. Man. He always <clears throat> is wearing something goofy. Love that. Uh, who else we got for 99? You got any weird 99s? Honestly, um, I want to say there's a guy on the night the 85 Bears that had wore 99, but I'm not gonna guess. So no, I think Wayne Gretzky is just plenty. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the guy. He's yeah, what fucking three thousand points worth of uh, 99 or whatever he is. Yeah, you talk about <laughs> records in sports that probably will never be like. There's a lot of records that we say won't get caught, but like they probably will get caught. I don't know if mm-hmm. Gretzky will ever be caught. No, I think there's two in modern day sports that aren't career. We're talking about just uh, per season, is any of Gretzky's records pretty much, and uh, Ricky Williams or Ricky Williams, Jesus Christ, Ricky Henderson's stolen base one. He has like over a hundred bags stolen in one year. Yeah, there's just no, there's just there. no way. You're I thought right. Acuna stealing like seventy whatever this year was insane, and that dude stole a base every time he was on first base. I don't think he could have gotten more if he tried. <laughs> right? Yeah. How do you get a hundred? You're stealing first and or you're stealing second and third. Like, that's the only way to he, do that. I think he was. Yeah, I think he was just snagging third on everybody. But there's just no way in today's fucking day and age. How demoralizing would that be as a catcher? Like, all right, we're playing Ricky today. Like, we're just going to get got. Yeah, let's just get him. <laughs> yeah. You can steal third. You just got to play against <clears throat> left-handed pitchers. You just got to be fast as shit before people <laughs> understand <laughs> fast. <Yeah. laughs> that's fucked. Uh, we got a lot on the docket today, obviously. Um, you notice my hat, the Michigan Wolverines are national champions. Uh, I didn't think it happened by episode 99 because I didn't think it ever fucking happened in my life, to be honest with you. So that's sick. Uh, we got to talk lions Rams. We got to talk about the shit that happened with the bears today. Uh, very interesting setting up their kind of, uh, their future and maybe the most important off season in bears history. I'll, I'll let, uh, let Michael decide on that one. But then we are going to get into a draft. It's draft day. We're going to do the hardest, most annoying, most inconvenient, minor life tasks. Uh, I gave the boys an example earlier today, but I might want to draft that one, so I'm not going to give it to you. So stay tuned for that. We'll do that at the end. But first... And we'll we'll do my uh we'll do my Harbaugh theory, but let's talk about Michigan. Michigan won the national championship. Uh, they beat Washington. <clears throat> what the fuck was the final score? I don't even remember what it was. Uh, they won by uh, it was thirty. It was twenty, and then they scored three uh two more touchdowns. Thirty four thirteen. Yeah, thirty four thirteen. Game was a lot closer than that. Hundred uh, percent. The whole way through. I mean, well. It, it was just like the Bama game in a lot of ways, where the first quarter, super explosive. Michigan gets out to, you know, what was it, 14 nothing at the time? Yeah. In Literally like six minutes. Or nine yeah. Minutes, a little more than that. 14 to three after the first quarter, and they just couldn't stop the run, period. Washington could do nothing to stop the run. And then in the second quarter, they, they shorted it up a little bit. Uh, and then after the half, holy fuck, whatever adjustments they made against the run Dude, worked. Bob, have I not been saying for months now 
Have I not been saying for months now that don't sleep on that Washington defense because they have made second half adjustments all year and has come up and stopped when they need to stop. And they did, man. They, they played fucking great. So I, I'm just saying I'm on the record saying that multiple times. That's all I have to say. They did. No, you're right. And they did. They came out and they made a huge second. Half. You're, they did that against Oregon twice. They made great second half adjustments and just shut them down. And, the, and yeah. that's what they did to Michigan, at least the run game. Um, you know, JJ definitely didn't have his best game throwing the ball. He did hit a couple guys right in the fucking hands again, and they just kind of fucked it up. But then you look at the other side and I think the story of the game was really Michael Penix just did not have it and was clearly, I don't know if he was playing hurt the whole game, but holy so. shit, dude, at the end of the game, he was in rough shape. Yeah, dude, and we were uh, bullying him. We if he if he came in injured, we were not helping. No, because no, every time he dropped back, I mean that old line eventually just broke down in the second half to the point where he was getting touched every single time he dropped back. I don't think he came in hurt. I think it was somewhere in the third quarter that he got hit, and then in the fourth quarter, uh, like beginning of the fourth, that like really, I feel like it really progressed quickly with on him. Uh, it did. I yeah, he, I, I don't think that he was as hurt early in the game like obviously you know there's little things here and there his ankle got stepped on whatever but i don't think that rib thing that he was really babying at the end i don't think that happened till later in the game to be honest with you yeah i just think he didn't have it i just think he was scared a little bit nervous and was just couldn't hit the throws that he's made hundreds of times this year i just you know i think at the end of the day as much gut and effort and you know big dick energy he had i think he was the reason why they lost that game. I mean, in reality, I think so too. And I think you know the first thing that comes to everybody's brain is that throw to uh, Toe Dunze the f- in the first half that he missed. Fourth down. Yeah, I mean, you just that open. he just wide open. Like if he hits him in stride, he's walking into the end zone, and he just missed it. I mean, he put the ball in a place where you want the ball. He he put the ball sideline shoulder, but just like yeah. a little bit too deep and a little bit too far. It was like yeah. just it was just weird. It's just the thing was the amount of times that he overthrew things that were moderately to very open was yep. very unlike him. Uh, and not having Dylan Johnson fully healthy obviously affected it too. But I mean, Penix is the real reason. I think. Which sucks. Yeah, I agree. And that you you could tell right away with Dylan Johnson that first snap that he got it, it was oh, like, I oh know. geez, like this kid's yep. not right. And they kept him. I mean, shout out Dude, to him. He played the whole game. He's a psycho. <laughs> Is it me or is that irresponsible by the coaches? Like, I know this is his last game. Like, this is the day. Like, this is probably the only time he's going to get a national championship, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, dude, like, you're almost, I feel like you're almost hurting the team. Like, you can't make that explosive cut. You can't, like, he was gutting it out and he was running hard, but it wasn't as hard as him. So, I don't know. I just felt like it was kind of detrimental almost to the squad. Yeah, and they didn't run the ball for shit. And it's almost a... And that definitely didn't help them in the passing game either, because I think Michigan definitely in the second half, especially really pinned their ears back. Like yeah. Jack said, and it was those, some of those overthrows definitely Penix definitely didn't have his best day, but some of those overthrows, it was just like the guy's just feeling it. Every time he drops yeah. back, he's like, he's worried about something. Um, But yeah, dude, it, it, I think at some point it's on Dylan Johnson to say, all right, like I don't have it today because yeah. you know, if, if he asked the coach guys, a thousand yard back, like he was a fucking bell cow all year. If he asked the coach, like I want to stay in coaches are going to let him stay in. Yeah. No, you're like not he wrong. earned his right. So it's almost on him. I know it's definitely, it's, it's on coaches too, but it's also on him to be like, Hey, I, I, like, I, just, I just thought after the, I just thought after the first play, he gets hurt, right? He goes to the tent. And I mean, he is like, it, it was evident. It wasn't like, a, oh, yeah. oh, after the play, he's, he's limping. It was like, dude, he, every step he took, he was hobbling. It's like, yeah, it, it's just hard for me to like, I love that, that grit that, you know, but like as a player, as a team, as a squad, like everyone's got to come together and be like, hey, man, we have to take this kid out. Like it sucks, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, you, you want to help the team as much as you possibly can, right? And I think by sitting out is where you are the most beneficial right now. I don't know. I just thought that yeah. was crazy that they let them play the whole game. But that's not why they lost. Let's get real. It really isn't. But No. <clears throat> I think uh, this it was this Michigan defense. It's what it's been all year. I mean, that 
them holding teams to an average. I think the average at the end of the year came out to like 10.3 points a game. Um, and <laughs> like, you know, you, you wonder if that's going to stay true after big 10 play. And it did. I mean, they just strangled Washington. They did. I'm Penix missed a couple throws, but like I said too, Michigan forced him to miss a couple throws here and there as well. So, um, it, it was a funny year because if you would have told me at like the Penn state game, like, all right, Michigan's going to win the national championship. I would have said, I just don't see it. Like, I just don't see it from this team. And they really showed it in the Ohio state game. And then they really fucking showed it in that Bama game. And going into that Washington game, I was so confident. Like I, I really didn't. I was like, there is just, I don't see many ways outside of a, perfect crazy Penix Heisman performance that Michigan loses that game because I mean final score even if Penix hit Penix hits that wide open throw to Odunze they're still losing by two touchdowns so it's like they had chances to be in the game and they missed them but also shout out to that Michigan defense and they had a hell of a lot of guys come back and play their senior year uh, to bring this whole thing together JJ after they got killed by Georgia, got beat by TCU, said, we're going to be back. We're going to be back, and we're going to win one of these things. And to beat Bama and then find out today that that was Saban's last game ever as a college football head coach, potentially, will be something that will be cool to tell our kids. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like we beat the greatest college football coach ever in his last game in the Rose Bowl in overtime. Um, but that the, it was this team, dude. Like the, after everything happened with the cheating scandal, um, say what you want about it, but uh, this team did it clean as fuck when it mattered against the toughest opponents in college football, and um, and they did it. And now I feel like I feel like I don't ever need another one. You know, it's kind of weird to think that way, but like after like this was just like such a weight off the shoulders. I feel like of all Michigan fans, where it, it felt bleak, especially if you're growing up like I did during the Rich Rodriguez era, and it was like holy fuck. And then it's like, all right, we can we need a new guy. Let's get Brady Hoke. And that was God knows that guy didn't even put a headset on. Hey, what's and, up? It's Brady Hoke. Yeah, I fucking missed the way that dude talked. <laughs> yeah, he'd be a great grandpa. But yeah, not a great head football coach, at least for us. Um, so it was bleak for a while. So to turn things around with this team that just cared so fucking much, and you heard Kirk Herbstreet talk about it too um, when he was on Pat McAfee. He would just say, talking to these kids, like, it's hard not to root for these kids. Like, they just wanted it so bad. They were so focused on this goal. Uh, and a team with – a bunch of recruiting four recruiting classes built up of this team outside of the top 10. So not that there were two five stars on this team, not the normal national championship team, not the Clemson, not the Bama, not the LSU. Uh, so it was awesome. Damn. And that's coming from an OSU alum. He played there, didn't he? Yeah. Kirk? And, and Kirk's one of the best in the business. He's, I mean, he, he won't say anything biased ever. Not like Des. Des will, fucking Dezel jerk Michigan off all day but uh yeah it was sick and for Harbaugh the whole Harbaugh situation he doesn't owe us anything he didn't owe us anything after getting us to the championship game he didn't owe us anything after beating Bama like uh he did what he set out to do he changed Michigan back from what I was talking about the Rich Rod days the Brady Hoke days even the Lloyd Carr days like Lloyd Carr at the end there, the last 10 years, it was just kind of living in mediocrity. And we had good players. We had John Navarre, great quarterback, Braylon Edwards, Chad Henney, Mike Hart, like Lamar Woodley. Holy fuck. We had guys and he just never got us over the hump for whatever reason. So um, Harbaugh doesn't owe us anything. I hope he goes to the National Football League and wins a Super Bowl somewhere. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Ha and I don't mean to talk shit, but how can you have a guy, how can you as a fan mm -hmm. root for like how how can you want him to leave? Like how can anyone Oh, be like, I uh, let me rephrase that. I don't want him to leave. Oh, Definitely don't want say, him to the, leave. 
dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I would be pissed if he left, if I was a fan. Like, I know, oh, you don't owe him anything. Like, they don't, he doesn't owe you anything. But, like, why the fuck? I don't know. I just feel like, fucking stay, dude. Don't be a bitch. Like, you just won. You did it. Like, Saban's out. Someone needs to fill his shoes. Like, fucking do it again. Or is yeah. he a, he's a pussy. No, he's a pussy if he leaves, I think. Because, dude, all of uh, all of the best ones, all of them, they won more than one, dude. And Harbaugh oh, for is sure. good. Fucking stay. Stick around. People want to play for you. Fucking don't be a pussy. And it, don't come to the Bears, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't like I don't like him. So I just to me, I also think that's a cop out. Like, oh, let's go win one with the like you said, a bunch of guys that didn't go to the league when they probably could. Yeah. You know, against a do- I'm not a sit here and talk a little shit, but like in a down NCAA year where the actual Definitely. best team in the nation didn't get in because they lost to Alabama. Uh, granted, that would have been a crazy. That would have been a crazy game, Georgia. Would have been a sick game. But um, beside the point, doesn't matter. Michigan's chance, but it's like fucking tough it out, man. Grow up, be one of the greats instead of just being. Oh, we I got Michigan back. Fuck you! Don't hand it off like a pussy, dude. Stay in the pocket and throw the ball. I, I hope know. you're right. I hope what he was, fucking comes back I, and I wins us crazy. five national championships. I just think but. it's crazy that he would leave. Like to me, that's insane because it, it can't be about money. It cannot. Be no, about money. it's 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 college football ruining college football. That's what it is. College football fucking sucks. It's a three hundred. If you're a head coach, it's a three hundred sixty five day a year job. And at this point. Now, not only do you have to recruit new players, you got to recruit your own fucking players to keep them there. So, yeah, like, but don't you think that they'll figure this out? Uh, yeah, I do. But is he going to sit around and wait for that when he was already so close to winning a Super Bowl and you get the fucking summer off? I don't know, man. I, you I know, mean, like I there's just I don't know. I don't blame I don't blame Saban for retiring. Like I'm not going to blame anybody yeah. for not sticking around for a you long time. You just said you don't football. blame fucking seventy year old Nick Saban who's won fucking twelve championships. For, yeah, no shit. We're yeah, because about Harbaugh who's won one yesterday. I know, but shit was ago. shit was different when Saban was dominating. There was no NIL. There was no transfer portal. Like yeah, the second that also shit showed up, he was ready. Years old. I get that. Harbaugh's not a young guy either. Yeah, but he's young enough. I mean, he's got to be, what, 60? He's young enough to probably do it for eight to ten more more years, years, for sure. If he wanted to, but, like, it's just so much different. It's not Pete Carroll at USC anymore. You're talking about Harbaugh leaving to go to an easier situation, essentially. Yep. Instead, we're comparing it to Saban, who's retiring from job, from work. You know what I mean? He'll right. probably go do something in, in in TV, but like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's a bitch move for him if he leaves. That's all. Hey, I hope you're right. Because I think uh, I think everybody kind of, especially the people down there in Columbus, think the boogeyman is leaving town. And if he stays, I mean, get the fucking cigars out because we're going to start piling on some teams here. But I just don't, I don't see a world where he stays because if he does – He's going to get suspended for half the year next year. Who knows what's going to happen to this national title as far as, like, actually keeping it. I don't know what's going to happen I, with all that I shit. Mean, it's just not – and for – I'm going to fucking – I'm going to say it for something that every team does. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they'll strip we, Michigan shit. got caught. I it, it, there's That's no excuse. Like, you can't – like, don't get yeah, caught. Yeah. Yeah, and don't do – do, yeah. that's no excuse to do it, but – I read a tweet from a guy, Brent McMurphy. He's a huge college football analyst. He said he was talking to an Alabama official at the game. And that guy said, yep, everybody cheats. He said, if you don't cheat, you end up looking like Vanderbilt. Literally said Vanderbilt. He's like, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, or you're Vanderbilt. So it's like, you got to fucking do something to get an edge. And if... uh, Filming somebody at with if using some grainy iPhone footage in the third deck in Columbus helped us get a couple of wins. I fucking doubt it. Uh, then so be it. I agree with you, dude. Um, I love how people are saying we stole like 
Eastern Carolina's shit. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's we just we couldn't formulate a plan for them on our own wits. So it sucks. It sucks because it's just every like people are gonna think of the championship this way. But I don't give a fuck. We See, we won. I, we beat I all the good wrong. teams fair and square. I think the only people that are gonna say that are Ohio State people and Michigan State people. Yeah, I think everybody people. else. Yeah, and not I, yeah, exactly. People that are just like oh. People that don't want to see you Michigan fans happy, which, hey, whatever, I get it. But also, like, that's why, like, kind of pivot. Like, I actually didn't – like, I bet on Washington because the value was just so good. And I did think that if Penix tightened it up, I do think Washington wins that game. But he just couldn't figure it out. We already talked about that. But, like, I also, like, didn't care if, if, if Michigan won. Like, I was just kind of like – I think it was like the second uh, and at, at halftime, I put like a fifty dollar bet on Washington, right? Yeah, I think I could have cashed out for like thirty two bucks, and I was sitting there like, I think I'm gonna cash this out because I think this is just gonna be a good game. I want to enjoy it. I don't care who wins. Yeah, but like I don't know how many people in the college football world. I'm not necessarily in that space, but like, I don't think I don't think people are gonna be like, oh, this is tarnished, like. It's like saying Reggie Bush didn't earn a Heisman, dude. Like, fuck off. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people who are smart, people who use their fucking head. Because once again, that's the same thing. It's like, yeah, dude, everyone was getting paid off, but we're talking about, you know, one of the best college football players ever. So yeah, he's gonna get a little bit of flack for it in terms of like losing his Heisman, whatever. That which is garbage. Um. Anyways, but yeah, like, no, Michigan won fair and square. Um. And I think Florida State still got host. <laughs> I, I, just think, I think Harbaugh is a pussy if he leaves. Uh, I know it's different and it sucks, but I just don't I don't see why they can't continue to create good teams, whether it's through recruiting or paying them. I just don't get how or why they can't do it, especially with the Big Ten turning into the Big 15 or whatever the fuck it's going to be, Big 30 now. Big 22 or something. Yeah, crazy. like I just, I just don't see how – people don't like you hear the players talk about playing for Harbaugh. I don't get how that wouldn't co- correlate or translate to people wanting to still come, whether it's through NIL or recruiting. I just don't get it. Yeah. Personally, but it's going to be, you know be a tough league now too. It's some of the best head coaches in college. I mean, a lot of the best head coaches in college football are in the big 10 now between Dan Lanning at Oregon, Kalen DeBoer at, uh, Washington, you got Matt Rule down at Nebraska, Ryan Day, obviously. That so, guy sucks, dude. Yeah, he I mean, should at this lose point, his I job. People are kind of thinking that. that we can't get into that job. can of worms. No, I agree. I'm just saying, I just think he should lose his job. But I don't know. I, I just Congrats to the hard. boys, though. Michigan yeah. National Champions uh, parade on Saturday in Ann Arbor is going to be bonkers, I'm sure. Uh, what do you want to do here first? Do you want to do my shit going on in the NFL, or do you want to do your shit going on in the NFL? I don't even know what my shit is. You got to explain to me what you what you're talking about. Let's do shit. your I, shit. We just did my right. shit, so we'll do your shit, and then we'll come back to mine. We'll come back to Lions Rams. Uh, so the Bears today announced that they're hanging on to Matt Eberflus. Yeah. Uh, but they fired the OC, yeah. which it sounded like from those DJ Moore quotes that we heard earlier in the year, that guy was the problem. Yeah. Um, do you stand by what you said last week when you said, even after the Green Bay game last week, do you stand by what you said where both Eberflus and fields rightfully so saved their jobs that week before i do i think so and i mean if you break down that green bay game i i mean i watched most of it if not all of it like i weirdly enough and i don't like to blame like this is the obvious thing it's it was on getsy so four man rush literally getting to fields every single time our line can't handle it right now right Mm -hmm. so what do we do we do a three three to five step drop back every play and have him make, make him try to step up in the pocket. Not once did they do a play action or a play where like a design rollout. Like all you gotta do, get him out of the pocket. He throws the ball well on the run. Get him out of the pocket. Get DJ Moore running. Get these guys running with them. Let him make easy throws. No, it was hey Justin, we're gonna let you get harassed for four quarters. I think he got sacked on third down like six times. I'm not even kidding you. Like every third down, he's getting butt fucked, and they don't get him out of the pocket. Yeah, like. 
get him out of the pocket, let him fucking use his feet and, you know, make plays. But no, the play calling was dog shit, and the O line just didn't hold up last week. I'll, I'll just throw that one out there. Um, so, so you I think just, I don't, I don't want to put that that loss on Fields, even though he didn't make any plays. I just don't think that's all. He on was him. put if, in a position to do it. Yeah, he was put in. A, I thought he was put in a very poor position to do it. Let alone any bit of positivity, you know. But do you trust at this point? Do you trust Matt Eberflus to hire? a new OC and a new DC when like he clearly fucked up this first round. Like, do you think he learned and like knows what he needs now? Or is it going to be the same old song and dance? We're just going to have another guy come in and waste three more years of fields time. I just, I also, I don't know. I think that, uh, I just think that you have to really think about what you're doing. If you're evil flus and, you cater cater to your job like your the well-being of your job like go do something a little bit maybe out of your comfort zone yeah and try i mean i don't know like the whole eric the enemy thing that's what everyone wants but i just don't know why he would go to another oc job instead of take a head coach um, there's so many head coaching jobs available exactly. it's crazy but like get someone of that nature instead of get you know like getsy was kind of a buster like Go out and get a nice OC. You're a fucking defensive guy. You need a legitimate yeah. OC. You need a fucking Andy Reid like mind yep. sitting around calling shit. And I mean, a Mike McDaniel type, like some yeah. just some nerd young yeah. guy that's a Ben Johnson type, the guy yeah. that's just fucking ready to take the next step. That's yeah. who the Bears I, need to find. I mean, and I think with the, that with the with a current offensive mind some yes. old head with yeah, that's exactly. stuck in his ways i feel like it's just gonna put set them back again no i agree and i think i don't know i really think like i was saying last week i just think that right now and i i hate i, I hate this concept because it really is dumb because we don't know shit but like i think the bears from polls to the goddamn guy that washes the jerseys they need to listen to the people right now and not cater to them but really fucking make moves that are going to really like entice the fandom. Cause dude, you heard the field's chance, bro. Like that shit's crazy. Like, right. We're here to back you guys. Like we're here dog. Like we're here to be, I don't know. I just feel like everything is so much better when they, they if they're, they're going to go draft Caleb Williams or some shit like that. Like don't do that. Fuck that. Get a haul for the pick. Keep Justin Fields. Fuck it. Draft the quarterback in the second. I don't give a fuck. They're yep. saying Penix is going to go in the second round. Like, get someone like that, a backup quarterback. Yeah. We don't have a backup quarterback. You Even know? get a haul for the pick, and then with some of that <clears> haul, <throat> like, turn your number nine into number five, still be able to get Marvin Harrison and have still yeah. more picks after that. No, for sure. Like, it, the thing is, with by getting rid of that first pick, we're always going to have a chance we'll always have a chance at a top quarterback because you're trading it to a team that's going to stink. You would imagine for a year or two, like, right. This isn't the last time. If we, if we trade it, this isn't going to be the last time we have a chance at a top five guy, like even if the bears progress. So it's like, and if they don't guess what, we're sitting at the same exact spot we are next year. And you know what, if we're seven and 10 with the way this season went, like I'm not mad. I'm not happy by any means. But like this isn't a this isn't a seven and ten team that is going nowhere. Like I just think that you put the pieces together. I think if Jalen Johnson plays and a couple other guys, you know, we we have a way better chance of winning that game the other day. So like this is a between an eight and nine, seven and ten team. Like, dude, I think that they can figure it out without getting rid of fields. And I think that Ibraflus is not a bad coach. I don't hate yeah. him personally. Yeah. No, it's it's going to be interesting. The next uh the next 2 months leading up to the draft. Yeah, I think we're going to have some interesting is, talks I think his on the Bears. dick is enormous. You think so? I do. And I don't think he gives a fuck about anything that anyone is saying but what he's seeing and what he's listening to and like I don't think he gives a fuck about what any of the top like analysts and oh draft Caleb Williams or oh do this it's like no 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 yeah. he's gonna do what the fuck he wants 
and what he thinks is best for the Bears. And I, ge- sorry, I genuinely think that it's it's going to be at least ride with Fields one more year, and keep adding to the team that's clearly has gotten better over the last year, even the last two years. It's like I just don't I don't see why no one in this draft right now is good enough for me to say get rid of fucking fields when there's so much other talent that we can stack up O-line and yep. fucking uh, offensively. And then we just keep buying defense. And with Eberflus, you can put it all together. I just don't get how that's not the plan. Personally. There you have it, Chicago. I mean, it sounds good to me. <clears throat> it sounds good to me. And sitting here in the NFC North as a Lions fan, uh, I – I want them to move on from Justin Fields. Like I want, I want this thing to break down and rebuild again. So, you know, like you said, if they, if they keep him, get some guys in the draft to shore up the O line, get him another weapon. That's, that's fucking scary to me. Yeah. So I see a lot of talks about Caleb Williams on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so hot. many people are vouching for him to go there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but I thought the same thing the, as you, Mike. I think towards the end there, there's not really a a great reason to toss Fields out of the hot seat yet, especially I, with somebody like Caleb Williams, because you never know. And also, like, it's not. I know. Okay, Caleb Williams is not a system quarterback, and I know that's kind of like the meme going around right now. But you see what the kid from USC did in the bowl game. You know what I mean? Like, he's, yeah, he threw four, what, six touchdowns or five. Also, think about this, too. Think about all the USC quarterbacks that have come out of USC over the last 15 years that were dogs. Yeah. None of them are good. None no, of like, them are good. It was a, like Ohio it, State. We didn't yeah, golf. Same thing. Oh, no, golf played for Cal. No. Yeah, yeah. It's been like Sam Darnold, Matt, Mark Sanchez. There's been a couple other names I can't remember. Um, Cal's had more good guys since the year yeah. 2000. <laughs> they had Rodgers and only, Goff. Yeah, come yeah, out of the Cal. only guy to come out of USC that been anything was Carson Palmer, and he fucking yep. you know. It's like I just don't get it. Like it is, it's a high profile offense that you know. I just think he's also shown a lot of immaturity. He seems like kind of a pussy in the locker room. Just something mm-hmm. that we don't need, dude. Like I, I just he no. seems like a bitch. And all the spotlights on him, and he's gonna want it. And I, that's not what the Bears need. Especially, dude, I liked him up until. Yeah, I liked him up until he did that bullshit with the, whatever he said about his draft pick. Like he wants ownership of the team he's, or some yeah, shit. He's the a fuck fucking. Out of yeah, he's a Who fuck boy you? for sure. Yeah, so he's not a guy. Spend. He's not a guy that's gonna put his head down and nah. you know do shit for the team, which is so yeah, important. Just, Crazy enough, I think he should be like the third overall pick in reality. Yeah. But it's just hard. How do you pass up on him over? I mean, who do you take? Wait, who has the first? The, the Bears. Bears. Who Carolina, has second and but, third? I think New England and Washington. Question. Yeah. Mark? Where is Carolina on this board? They're one, but we have they, their pick. Yeah. They oh, traded it yeah. to the Bears. And the DJ Moore trade. Yeah. Mm, great trade. Great trade. Yeah, great trade yeah. for the Bears. Bears made out like fucking bandits on that one. Um, um, all right. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Let's move on to a team that has a game on Sunday. That's not shots at you. You guys are going to. I was going to say, I, 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 hope that, shots. I was going to say, I hope you don't think I give a fuck that you just said that. Cause I, I really don't. I <laughs> listen to a team that fucking matters. A little part of, a little part of me hoped that you gave a fuck. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't give a fuck. I mean, I knew we weren't going to be playing this week, no matter what, for the last like wonder, three yeah. weeks. So. I wonder how loud soldier Field's going to be this weekend. Oh, wait, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a Chicago fire game there. They, Oh, it's going to be fucking negative degrees. Out. I didn't even know soccer. Hold on, give me one second. Keep talking. Um, Lions versus Rams. It was it was always going to be Lions versus Rams. They should they might as well have just scheduled this thing after Week One this year. <laughs> it was always going to be Matt Stafford coming back to Detroit. Uh, your boy grinded out a sales contest, won a pair of tickets. I'm going to be in the building. I cannot fucking wait. Uh, it's like winning, winning the national championship with Michigan on Monday was crazy. This is going to be the craziest sports week of my life. 
that was cool, but and I'm a I'm a giant Michigan fan and I love the team, but holy fuck. The Lions winning a playoff game and being in the building for that would be like that's my sports like that's Super the top. Ball. Like that's the top for me. Um it's interesting. A lot of talk on Twitter, uh, a lot of talk in the media this week has been Stafford's coming back to town. What's the reception? Um, you know, I'm reading on our, uh, you know, some of our local news outlets here, like bars downtown aren't going to let you in if you're wearing a Stafford jersey. Um, you know, the players coming out, like what? it's there's only one number nine that I know, and it's Jamison Williams. Like a lot of the players have been saying that. So it's interesting. I, I'm not. I, hey, I loved Stafford when he was here. Um, I have nothing but respect for the guy. Like, I'm glad that he went to L.A., got his Super Bowl. Uh, but I hope we fucking break his legs on Sunday. Like, that's just kind of how it is. And no, no offense to the guy. Like I said, when he runs out there for his first snap, if we give him, you know, some claps and a little bit of an ovation, great. Let's do that right away. After that, let's break his fucking neck. Like, that's... This is bigger than what he didn't do here. Like, that's what this is about. He couldn't take us here. Jared Goff did take us here. Like, it's time to fucking move on. We saw Stafford get his. The Detroit Rams are not a thing. Like, it's time to fucking go out and and take what's ours. Yeah. Dude, Dad and I talked about this earlier today. Rob, shout out to Rob Sr. Um, It's almost more of a golf revenge game it absolutely is more of a golf revenge game if you want to talk about feelings it's the fact that sean McVay said hey dude i don't think that you're going to be the guy that's going to take us to the promised land so i'm going to get rid of you and uh and replace you with a new shiny toy and i mean sean McVay got it done can't really blame the guy there yeah but, i was gonna say work to perfection work to perfection <laughs> but if anybody has a reason to be pissed off not matthew stafford he has nothing he has no resentment towards detroit when he left it was nothing but fucking flowers for that guy so if anybody's going to be pissed off and he already said it it's jared goff like jared goff is here for a revenge game against sean McVay. Um, he already said there is nothing that I want more than to win a playoff game for this city. And this lions team in that way kind of feels like the Michigan team where they just want this so bad. And they have that chip on their shoulder mentality every single week and the weeks when they didn't have it, the Ravens game, like games like that, the Thanksgiving game, the games where we were kind of riding a little bit too high they shit the bet. So like this team rider, like there's, there's just not enough talent for this team to win on talent alone at this point, especially on the defensive side. So for this team to get wins, especially in the playoffs, it's, I think it's going to come down to being more pissed off, caring more, making that extra play. Um, but with all that said, uh, it's just us three talking right now. I'm fucking nervous boys. I'm pretty fucking nervous about this game on Sunday. I'm, I'm pretty a little fucking, bit nervous. I'm pretty nervous about this game on Sunday, and there's two reasons why. And one split out left and one split out right, and that's <laughs> Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. Uh, last few weeks, torched by Justin Jefferson. Week before that, torched by CeeDee Lamb. Week before that, torched by Justin Jefferson. We've been having a lot of problems with number one receivers. Rams got two of them. And uh, say what you want about Puka Nakua. Um, maybe people kind of thought that this season for him was, um, you know, just like Matt Stafford does this for everybody. I don't think you can say that anymore. This guy's a certified dog. Yeah. And, uh, and covering him with whoever the fuck that we throw out there, Vildor, or whether it's, whether it's Brian Branch, you know, whoever we put on this guy, like it's going to be a tough matchup. So, I, I really think the key of the game is going to be kind of like it was for Penix. Like, we got to get to Stafford early and often and make him uncomfortable. Otherwise, it's going to be a long day in Ford Field. Doesn't matter how loud it is, and it's going to be the loudest stadium in the NFL. I promise you that on Wild Card Weekend. Uh, but it doesn't matter because Stafford's been here, done it. 
He can play through that shit. He won a Super Bowl. Won on a Super Bowl and a game-winning drive. Uh, we got to get to him. We got to make him physically uncomfortable, I think, to win this game. Because it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a shootout. No two I ways agree. about it. Yeah, I think so, too. Thoughts, Michael? Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of them. And... Uh, I don't. I'd be nervous as well. I uh, I think the Lions are the better team, but I don't know, man. The Rams have really gotten back. I, weirdly enough, ever since Kyron Williams has been back in the lineup, yep, that offense is scary, dude. That's you know that Kyron Williams average has the most yards per game this year. Rushing. Yeah, it's insane. Quietly, quiet Quietly. as fuck. Guy just. Gets and he was out. He was out for a few weeks, so you can't yeah. really take his total yards into account. But yeah, no, his average per game. game was insane. Yeah, it's like where, and then you have two slot receivers that run a bunch of option routes. I, mm-hmm. You like you, you, if you don't get to him, it's gonna. You need to score thirty five to win. Um, yep, I'd be nervous. I, I just do. I just think there's a lot on that Rams team that. This was the team you didn't want. One of the teams you didn't want to play. Weirdly hot coming into the playoffs. Like, yep. the very Eagles, hot. I think the eight Eagles, of their last nine or something like yeah. that, the Rams. Well, they just went on a tear at the end of the year. That's Beating teams like the Browns and, like, good teams. Yeah. And, I mean, they beat San Fran, too, which I don't think that really matters. But still, it's like they beat They them. beat the Ravens. Yeah. Where it's like you're <laughs> or they lost like, to the Ravens in OT. One of the two. They lost to the Ravens in OT. They went OT like, with the Ravens in Baltimore. It's like. You know, especially in the NFC right now, where like other than maybe the Cowboys, obviously you're not going to see the Niners round one, but like the Eagles have been sucking dicks. Tampa Bay is just kind. I mean, but they're just not good. And then who was the no, uh, who's the seventh stink. seed? The Packers. I mean, the Packers would have yeah. been a tough thing to see team to see, but I just think they the Lions match up pretty well with them. It's like yep. So other than the Cowboys, which you knew you weren't going to play, mm-hmm. the fucking Rams were the last team you wanted to see in this first round, but. Yep. If you get by them, I mean, if, shit. If if, you, if, if we get them. by, if we get by them, and the Cowboys can beat the Pack, and we got a chance to go back to Dallas, I really like our uh, our chances in that game. Yeah, it just sucks because the Cowboys at home are just so fucking good, man. But they are. I mean, shit. You got get got to win this weekend first, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a great game. I don't know what the over is, but hammer the fucking over. Um, I think this is one of those games where you could flip the coin and then say, all right, this team gets a possession. This team gets a possession. Whoever yeah. scores win. <laughs> like, I also think too, like, like, this, this game's going to come down to the last team with the ball. The, the Lions are really good at running the football, but like <clears throat> they really need to establish run. Yep. Because they can, they could do just fine through the air. I mean, the Rams DB aren't like anything to write home about, but like, the run game opens up the pass so much, and it's like obviously who, the Rams' uh, best part is their D line. I would assume. Yeah, the defense. Rams are middle just, of the road defense. They're seventeenth yeah. in defensive efficiency, so they're like basically the seventeenth yeah. ranked defense in the league. But I agree, and that's why I think I think this game plan is very similar to the Michigan versus Washington game plan. Yeah. Like Michigan need to keep the ball out of Penix's hands. We need to grind the game out on the ground with Monty and, and Jameer Gibbs and take time of possession and fucking take the ball out of Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Kyron Williams. We got to take the ball out of those guys' hands. Yeah. The only thing that gives me hope for this one, um, you know, that it might not be a last-second drive to win it for either team would be uh, Matt Stafford at some point is going to give us the ball. If anybody in Detroit knows anything about Matt Stafford, the guy is a gunslinger, and he'll make a disgusting throw or two, but he's also going to make a throw where it's like, holy fuck, what the hell was he doing there, and we're going to pick the ball off. So, How many also, picks does Stafford have this year? Oh, he was out for a lot. He was out for a while, so it's kind of hard also, to tell. Also, yeah. um, weirdly enough, too, the fucking – the Rams don't exactly have a great like kicking game either. They got fucking Marishka Hargate fucking kicking the Marishka ball for them. Hargate. I think he has some weird name that's close to that. Um, 
Hey, so neither team has a kicker then. So it's going to yeah, be a lot so of it's like, pounds. you know, <laughs> yeah, shit like that. I mean, that, that, that plays, you know, so it plays. we'll see. It'll be an interesting, uh, interesting game. The NFC we'll is, uh, is weird because of how poorly the Eagles are playing. So mm-hmm. I really don't know who's going to win it. Outside so. the Niners and even the Niners, it kind of feels a little bit more wide open in the NFC than it does with the yeah, Baltimore. Yeah, it's just, I think dominant, there's more uh, even AFC. teams. Yeah, exactly. Right, I more agree. Even and I think the Bills are nothing to, no, no joke this year, but I just know that Josh Allen has no dog in him. Uh, but <laughs> the AFC is bad other than the Ravens and maybe the Bills. Like, I, I don't know. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, be last thing on the NFL, we like we said, million different coaching vacancies. Mike Vrabel getting fired was fucking crazy to me. I get it. I get like wanting to move on and kind of doing that whole thing. But um, I wanted to throw Did I ever say my Harbaugh theory? Mm-mm. All right. So I think this would be fucking sweet. And we're hearing more more and more rumblings. As as many people want to come at me and say that this is impossible, do a little bit of research on Steelers Twitter. I think Jim Harbaugh going to Pittsburgh would be a perfect fit and a fun fit. Not only would he kind of, I mean, he just kind of feels like a grind it down. You know, he's a, he's a blue collar guy. He's run the football first guy. He'd be in division with his brother who is on top of the world with the Baltimore Ravens right now. Play John twice a year. Uh, And I don't know if you've been seeing this too, but. The like the Tomlin and the Rooney family like maybe parting ways thing is like picks up more steam every day. I don't know if it's, I they would never fire him. I don't think, but I think maybe Mike would eventually be like, all right, like I've kind of did my time here. The last couple thing, the last couple years have just been we're, we're living in mediocrity. Uh, maybe it's time for me to move to a different situation. Um. It's interesting, but I think that would be so fun if Harbaugh was able to be, if he wasn't at Michigan, if he was able to be in the division with his brother uh, in the AFC North in the toughest division in football outside of the the black and blue NFC North, of course. Uh, I think that would just be a blast for all of, all of football. Interesting. I mean, I don't know. I, I find it hard. Black and blue. I find it's just it hard the Packers for winning for leave, fucking but... 30 years. Yeah, but that's what they used to call it when it wasn't the Packers winning for 30 years. The the land before time, they say. That was the NFC Central. Yep, that was the NFC Central. Exactly. Did, uh, Tampa Bay Bucks it. did a stint in the NFC Central. If you can I don't know that. how I I don't know how I feel about that. Um can I pivot into one basketball thing for a second? You want to talk about Spolstra? Uh, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Boy got paid, and he got paid right after the the papers <laughs> were finalized, baby. Dude, that's the most gangster shit I've ever heard from a sports team in the history of the world. Jack, do you know what's going on right now? No, I was just going to say, what happened? So Eric Spolstra, the uh, coach of the Miami Heat, just caught a bag extension. I mean, we're talking a guy who's won multiple Wait. championships, been there. They didn't sign. They didn't extend him until after his fucking divorce was finalized. I Wait, did see this dude, today, which is such a cash money move. That old Sheila a, ain't getting a cut anymore. Not a goddamn dime, you fuck. <laughs> that is such a dog move on the organization. Like, you know, they had to been talking about that. Like, hey, I'll take the whatever you give me right now. That's cool. Just when you extend me, just wait. Just wait. Like, dude. Yeah. Pat Riley's the Don. He's dude, the man. Like, sick, I, I know, like, it was cool for the 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 commanders to go out and get that guy um, from the Warriors. Do you think Pat Riley ever gets NFL calls? Just be like, hey, dude, like, what do you think about coming over here and just kind of being president and writing this shit? I don't know. I Who think he Pat Riley was. Yeah. yeah. I, he was just such a good coach, dude. Like. That, President like, of the heat. I think he because he was just he's such a basketball mind, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he's not just like a an executive. He was a, a you know championship winning coach too. Where it's like, I I don't know if he gets those calls compared. But then again, I don't know. You know, I mean, he probably does. Like, hey, fuck it. But I just don't know if he's got the savvy to do it anywhere else. Yeah, 
I just wanted to bring that up because I think that is the most funny as fuck shit and sick I've ever heard, dude. Like, fuck yeah, bro. Like, that's loyalty right there, man. Like, this dude has won so much and is still, you know, doing good things. Like, fuck it. We're going to treat this man. Like, ah, I just, I love it. We need more people. Never heard, that. never heard a bad word about yeah. Eric Spolster either. Just an easy guy to root for. Yeah. yeah. I always just think he, I always used to think he was a fucking nerd because this was like, Prime D Rose, like MVP D Rose, when Spolcher got gets hired, and yep. LeBron goes and blah blah blah, and I'm yep. like, dude, this fucking nerd's gonna get a couple of, of rings because LeBron, a couple of free later. ones, yeah, a couple of free ones. Then all of a sudden they all leave and he's still doing well, and I'm like, okay, yep. I kind of like Eric Spolcher now that the fucking boys are gone. So, all right, yeah, motherfuckers, cool. let's spin this yeah. wheel. I got yes. shit to do. Spin the wheel. Let's do it. Sorry, we got a little. Uh, we got 50 <clears throat> minutes of sports in. There's a lot to talk about, dude. I mean, Ford yeah, Field. There's a lot. Fucking Top's going to blow off Ford Field on Sunday. Give us Sunday doing... night, too. Give us Tariko and Collinsworth. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jack. Are we... Then we do have Chris Collinsworth. Fuck yeah, dude. The Collinsworth slide. That's beautiful. Um, We're doing four rounds here. I'm calling it right now. I feel like that's healthy. If we do five, we're going to be stretching boundaries. Yeah, let's do four. All right. All right, the wheel. Oh, shit. All right. Anybody that doesn't remember, this is the hardest slash annoying slash inconvenient minor life tasks draft. Jack, what pick do you want? I got slot number one. Okay. A rare uh, rare spin the wheel win for you, Jack. I feel like you never win. Oops, it didn't remove my name and it just landed on me again. That's insanity. Hold on. Interesting. Ah, remove. There we go. Oh, God. What do you want, Mike? Two. That's fine. I'll take two. <laughs> the twofer. Okay. <laughs> Does this have to be an actual task? Uh, I think we'll be loose with it. I say let it rip, and we'll let the gods decide. A little bit loose? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I am going to rip into pick number one. Are we ready? Yep. Okay. My first pick is tried and true. This is a very Jackson thing, I think, but I swear on the Lord's name that every time I get in the shower in the morning, I always have a podcast on every time I get in the fucking shower immediately a long ass ad plays. And now I can't skip it because my phone's all the way across the fucking room. And then I just got to stand in the shower and take my shower. <laughs> listening so, to an ad instead of the podcast. Or the inconvenience here is that you either listen to it or you now have to immediately get out of the shower, wipe your hand so you can click skip on this fucking bullshit ad. I think the task here is skipping ads. Would you agree, yeah. Michael? Sure. Yeah. Skipping ads. Mike already hates this. That's fine. I do because, go to hell. because I was told that it was something that's hard. That is a, pretty much a simple task that is difficult to do. If so, if you gave the example, you, you people would understand more because this is where the, the uh, inspiration comes from. But I'm OK with it. That's fine. Well, we're going to have a couple of different do. boards. I like yeah. it. Skipping ads fucking sucks. And now yeah, but you have you to do it on everything. That, we did a draft like two months ago with this exact type of thing. Yeah, but it wasn't the same thing. It was kind of the exact same thing. It's not. Literally. I think it was close. It was very close. But who gives a fuck? Well, I don't. I'm just saying, though, is that we're double dipping into things where it's like we this was supposed to be like things you do that should be easy but are difficult at the time. Not The rest of mine are things you do. Okay, that's fine. I'm just saying. Only because we already did this. <laughs> well, hit us with your pick then. Let's yeah, see. Right. Right. Let's see All right, how Michael, different we are here. Mister knows the draft. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. Um, oh yeah, I'm up. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go with you know. This might be embarrassing, but um, all these fucking Victoria's Secrets and shit. 
putting the two hooks on these bras nowadays, three <laughs> hooks sometimes too. I don't got enough thumb to go across all three fucking hooks. All right. It's a lot of hooks. And Removing like, a brazier is your pick. Brazier. Yeah. And I have to reiterate the most that it's the two plus hooks that are really upsetting because obviously I can get my finger, my, you know, you can get the, the, the leverage, but it's that thumb that I can only get. I got this little thumb. I can only get most of it on it. And it's just kind of yep. like, and nothing more embarrassing than having to go one hook at a time, you know, where it's like, it is what it is. I or do two what hands. I do. When did we yeah, move oh, off I'm... some Velcro? What happened to that? You know, what happened to those <laughs> days? Yeah. Yeah, let's put some now, metal in my back, you know? Now everything's hooks. There's a combination. It's a whole thing. You're right. You, I know, what I, you know what I like? I do like those ones. I don't know if they still, if, if chicks, I shouldn't call them bitches. If the ones that come off in the front, <laughs> that shit's fire. Because then they oh, just yeah. do it. Those are great. Do it. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I only call you bitches because I don't know the names individually. <laughs> Shout out Cat Williams. He is Shout out Cat right Williams. Now. Yeah, that boy is trending. Holy shit. I'll shit. stick up for that man through Fuck thick and thin. Yeah. He can shit I on agree. anybody he wants. I agree. Um, all right. I'll go here. Uh, number one, this one's easy for me. I hate this so much. Putting on a bed sheet. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I that's, fucking hate yeah, it. That's fair. That's, that's it's shock. just it's just so hard, dude. And it's yeah. just no matter how much you try to make it a one person job, it's just not. It's just not. Well, yeah, you got to get like weights and shit. <laughs> you do. Yeah, it's, dude. It, you it got really like a motorcycle weird. helmet weighing down like one side and then you put your TV on a corner and then it's, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a whole mess. It's a mess. And nothing pisses you off more than when you're digging one of those corners in and then one just fucking thing. Yep. Mm. yep. That'll send good. a good day into a bad day real quick. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna go putting on a bed sheet as my first one, and then, man, there's a couple that I really want, and I don't think you guys are gonna take, so I might save those. Uh, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with getting your phone out of the crack of your car. Dude, I have that on my fucking list, bro. I that's thought you might, and that's why I was taking that. Dude, that is such a good one, bro. Because, dude, just like the, the, you're like, they just need to either either make them huge, or don't even have it there. There's no reason <laughs> for, for it. For real, bro. It's and, so dumb. And you'll see like the infomercial with like the thing, and it's like, oh, yeah. catch all the shit. We shouldn't need that. Like GM, yeah. put that shit in there. We need to talk to Maya about that. Really? Ever engineer some shit where, dude, those would be selling like hotcakes if you put a car that your phone can't lo- get lost in. People will be buying that like crazy. Yeah. That shit. And I got these fat fucking hands, dude. Like, so when it's stuck, like, it's hard. Like, sometimes I got to go to, like, the bra. I got to go two hands and fucking yep. shimmy it up, dude. It's, it's, a pain a, <laughs> it's over. You're not, I mean, you just got to drive the rest of the way home. With the phone under there. That's with no just, phone. Is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just got to yeah. hope and pray that it fell far enough to where it's in your back seat now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you always hope for the slide back rather than yeah, the slide. The slide, the slide straight down is then you got to get a hockey stick. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, that shit is the worst, bro. I can't believe you took that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was definitely lasting more than the first round. <laughs> no, dude. I, I knew. I was like, funny. this one he could take. All right, go ahead, Michael. Um, this one. Uh, all right. I've talked about this plenty of time on here, but uh, just motion censored bathroom shit. Just trying mm. to wash your hands when there's a fucking I, the amount of times I've been sitting there with soap on my hands waiting for this thing to turn on looking like an asshole is too many. Yep. I've, I can count on I can count can't count on two hands how many times it's happened it's just like just make it easier for me please michael dude i have a bathroom update for us so that'll get us real stoked it's gonna piss bob off but for you and i this is heaven right here craziest shit happened at work today i went to use the motion censored towel dispenser and it broke this thing must have been accidentally doubled up like Ooh. both of the rolls must have been coming out one swipe two pieces come out together. Oh, no. So I did two swipes, 
for a total of four paper towels. Yeah, that's elite. That it was really elite. good. Yeah, it was awesome. That'll I was like, my hands have never been drier. Yeah, that'll I, shit will make your day. I'm yeah. telling you, dude, you guys are really putting a damper on big lever <laughs> and and the lever uh, hand towels. <laughs> It's people like you that took the levers away from us, us good, uh, dry-handed Americans. I don't want the lever. That lever's so nasty, dude. Oh, the oh, lever's elite. The lever. Yeah, I want the lever, honestly. I don't um, that. Okay, that's a good one. That is very uh, annoying, and washing your hands would be a life task, I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, Jack. All right, for pick number two, the sweetheart pick. I am going to go with slipping a shoe on. Like when you're trying to slip a shoe on and the back goes down and then you're trying <laughs> to get it good. up onto your ankle, but it won't quite go over your, your heel. And then yep. when it finally does, it's still, there's like a lump in it and it feels off. Yep. That's a great slipping one. on shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a just, firm believer too. in never I'm, tying shoes. I'm just going to put on, I'm just going to put putting on shoes. <laughs> that's funny because that's exactly Fucking what I, that's exactly what I just wrote. Down. It's the act of just getting your shoes on. It's a real bitch. And fun, Jack. You're saying that you don't tie any shoes, or you have a knot in your shoe and you just never untie it and tie it. No, yeah, sorry. I tie shoes, but only one time. Yeah, I'm pretty close with you on that. I don't untie most of my shoes. I have some that I tie, some that I don't tie. Yeah. Blazers, I tie. Boots, I tie. Then I have like Nikes. I don't tie. Fair. I got a dude. I don't foot, tie so my blazers, hard. and it is a fucking wrestling match every time. I don't know why I don't just untie them. Actually, <laughs> that sounds yeah, so know, stupid man. now that I'm saying it out loud. It takes me like five minutes to put those motherfuckers on. Anything high ankle, I feel like you gotta untie. Get yeah. the hoof yeah. in there. I just See, wear them then. loose as fuck. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I wear. I have a bunch of Jordan One highs and. I only lace them up to like the ankle. So like, mm-hmm. even though it goes past my ankle, they're only tied to the top of my foot. So I don't have to do that whole song and dance. That's such a goofy ass look. It's such a good look. And also they don't make the laces long enough to get them up to the top unless you just kind of hang them off like that without a knot. So it just kind of doesn't look right. So it's a good look. So chill the fuck out. I'm not a OV look. tongue out type shit it's it's <laughs> that's kind of what it sounds look. like it sounds no, like you're wearing it. you're wearing osiris's i was just gonna say osiris vibe the widest tongue you've ever seen in your life guys no. sponsored by dc no, 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 no. <laughs> i did buy a pair of, bro i did buy a pair of fat tongue vans though and they're sick they look kind of they're like a cross between like an old school and like uh, like the you know like the mid top van and like an yeah. old like DC fucking skate shoe and I fucking yeah so they are like vans used to all be like that kind of yeah they're literally called new school if you want to look them up they're fire though oh, we'll super comfy all right Jack what do you got on the wrap around here putting on shoes that's a great one oh yeah putting on shoes um putting on shoes. I am gonna go here with. And this is kind of another inconvenience, but it's also something you do. So I don't know if Mike's going to like this one. I just want there to be an action, not, oh, I hate ads. That's all. Oh, all right. All right. This one's not <laughs> ads. Your ads pick stunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost right. got vetoed. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I live in a very sensitive home for this because I got goofy ass doorknobs. But when you're walking by a doorknob or really anything and something snags your fucking clothes and you Mm. get whiplashed like when you least expect it Uh, so leaving doors open Uh, grabbers wait i think it's it's putting on shoes and i think it's just wearing loose clothes i think it's the second (laughs) yeah Yeah, i have on my (laughs) list doorknob grabber yeah i get what you're saying though and that is incredibly annoying oh yeah that happens to me so fucking often. You know what happens to me a lot is when, uh, and I don't want to, I'm not I'm trying to tip a pick here, but when I'm bringing in groceries. I was just going to say, dude, it happens at the most inconvenient times when mm-hmm. you have your hands absolutely full. Yep. Yeah, that's a problem. Yep. And I've actually like ripped like clothing doing it too because like like oh it gets up like your pocket of your sweater or even like your pants or whatever depending on where like 
and it's been like, <sighs> and I'm like, motherfucker, dude. Like now I have like a thread missing and I look like a hoodlum. Pisses yeah, me but off. you know what's even more <clears throat> fucked up is that you subconsciously knew that it might rip, but it's the principle of the thing, and you don't want to get it off the hook, so you just say, fuck it. I'm just ripping yeah. this thing because of the well, principle, because fuck that hook. So I, I don't necessarily <laughs> disagree with you, but like... So Teach the hook at, a lesson. At the fucking Cubs game, like that happened to me this year, like it's like even like seats like that that have, you know, the protruding fucking armrest, and it, just that... Just getting snagged is a fucking pain in the ass. That's a good way to put it, Jack. I'd say getting snagged, maybe, would be the best way to put it. Or <clears throat> doorknob grabber. <laughs> or the doorknob grabber. That makes it sound <laughs> like a, a go-go gadget hand comes out and literally... Dude, I swear to God, I was just going to say, my doorknobs are literally arms that will just reach out and grab my shit. I don't know what's <laughs> up with them, but... Dude, and I don't close any of my doors, ever. All of my doors are always open, so I don't know how this happens so often the worst michael you guys oh you guys have never mike you lived alone right uh sort of kind of yeah do you like if you're home alone i guess yeah everybody can answer this if you're home alone you're taking a shower or like taking a shit or something are you keeping the bathroom door open no 99 percent of the time i'm door closed i like the privacy really I I'm normally also, close the door as well. I've done a couple of open door shits. It's just not for I, me. I honestly really? like the open door shower better than the open door shit. I agree 100%. I will open the door, especially for Max, because uh, he doesn't like the steam. So, like, if I'm taking a shower and I know I can keep the door open, I will always do that for him. Um, Dude, I have never closed. I don't think I've. I don't think my bathroom door has been closed. Since I moved in. I think that's a thing that you just kind of fall into because you're like, oh, I can walk around this bitch naked. I can shit with the door open. But in reality, why the fuck do you want any of that odor or anything slipping out of the bathroom? You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. I don't get the, 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 the fucking novelty of it. Like, I just don't understand it. Okay. I don't know. I don't even think about it. I used to shower with the door closed, but now I don't even do that. Dude, you're also talking to a guy that, like, I have a long hallway, and, like, parts of the hallway I so close my eyes when I walk down at, at nighttime because I'm a fucking pussy. So if you think I'm showering with or shitting with the door open when I'm alone, <laughs> you're out of your goddamn mind. Because if someone comes in, I need to be able to prepare because I'm a fucking bitch, and I think that someone is always watching me. Yeah, All right. No. Noted pussies of episode 99, Jim Harbaugh, Michael Falco. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Hey, listen, I never thought well, I'd be able to be pretty similar reasons, believe yeah, it or not. <laughs> I uh, I never thought I'd be able to get put into the same realm as, as Harbaugh. So you know what? I'll take Look it. Look at that. I'll, same conversation. People are always thinking of you guys <clears throat> together. Um, I got an absolute hitter of one that I wanted to save for the fucking the, the uh honorables because it's so dumb, but I think it's hilarious. Um you know so you're what? not Fuck. putting that now, I'm just a, do it now. I'm just, I'm just gonna go with it right now. Yeah. So um, this goes for any preparation, but I'm going to go specifically to graham crackers and breaking graham crackers evenly should be so simple, but it is so hard to do. And it frustrates me so much because I'm such a symmetry guy. I like things being, you know, like I like to do shit perfectly like that, that it just grinds my gears that I cannot just crack graham crackers perfectly every fucking time. So you're saying when you get like the, you get the jagged, the one long jagged yeah, exactly. piece, that's how they yeah. always break. That's how they always end up yeah. breaking. They break up into what, four or eight pieces or whatever, and you crack them at the perforation, and then all of a sudden you got one that's got a little fucking ear hanging off of it, and you're like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Say so. perforation one more time. Perforation? It's perforation. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> perforation. I, like I didn't the, even catch it. I like the way you said it. Oh, you're, I think you're right. Yeah. Perforated. Yeah, it's perforated. Uh, I tell you what, this might be the most shocking news ever in the history of Fair Enough Podcast. I did not have breaking graham crackers on my list. <laughs> That's why I just thought it's fucking funny. But that was it's like a when very. We, well, when we started talking about this, like that was like the second thing that I wrote down. <laughs> like, that was, like i'm just like this is accurate but i don't want to put it out on into this stratosphere but i don't give a fuck you know what i mean i think it's it's yeah. comical. putting on a bed sheet and then you had those fucking graham crackers seriously though dude 
very underrated snack that I don't have anymore. Uh, graham crackers and peanut butter. Dude, I had some Whoa. Teddy Grahams the other day, and that's why I think I got graham crackers on my mind. I had some mm. Teddy Grahams, just I, like dude. old honey. Bro, so good. I haven't had it. They're so still good. pumping those out, eh? I haven't even been down the Teddy Graham aisle. You can't even yeah. go down that aisle. The second you turn 20, you can't go down that aisle anymore. Yeah. They I didn't basically block some- it off. Fucking, there was little children running around here the other day, and all of a sudden I look in the cabinet, and there's fucking Teddy Grahams, and I said, oh, yeah, these are all getting fucking snaked by me. That's really (laughs) sick. (laughs) That's really sick. Mike, where'd our Teddy Grahams go? (laughs) Yeah, I think kids' food food is something that's not thought about enough when you're thinking about having kids. Yeah, yeah. I'd Might be, be nice to have a couple of Capri Suns around here. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> dude? Bro, I Uber eated. I'm such a fat fucking slob and just have no regard for money. But I Uber eated some some snacks the other day, like a week, ago, two weeks ago, and I yeah. got a lunchable. And the best part was the fucking Capri Sun. I spent seven dollars on a lunchable, and I was like, this Capri Sun made it all worth it. <laughs> What kind of lo- I, we I, we're just really dragging this thing on? But what kind of lunchable and what kind of Capri Sun was it? I have it, to it know. was it was from Seven Eleven, so they didn't have many options. It was just a I think it was the ham. Uh, it was one of the meats. It was either the ham or ham, turkey. cheese and crackers. Yeah, uh, and I think it was like the Pacific Cooler. So it was a, it was a yeah, solid. I mean, what a, was a banger good. Capri yeah, Sun. Yeah, it was a good one. one so <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's beautiful. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll go here and I'll I'll make this quick. Um, third pick, I'm gonna go with having to go back into the house for one last thing. Like getting in your car, you fucking think that you got everything. You're patting yourself down. You're looking in the back seat, and then you're like, "Motherfucker, mm-hmm. I forgot this." And it's one last. It's just like it's your headphones or it's like your belt. Ninety nine percent of the time for me, it's my belt that I have to come back inside for. Yeah. It's like, dude, that is the worst. When you're, you've are you been making 100 trips back and forth to your car, you're going on some trip somewhere, and you got that one last thing that makes you unlock the door is the worst part. Having to unlock the door again, go back in, come back out, relock the door. Brutal. Yeah. You might as well just <clears throat> get in bed, go to sleep, start all over tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I've been doing that with my keys lately. Been going out to my car, opening my door, and not having my car keys to open said door. It's pretty embarrassing. Oh, that's yeah. tough. What are we doing? That's here, tough. Kid? That's where my mind's um, at. Sorry. Last one I'm going to go with is <laughs> just using an ATM. Oh, the worst, dude. Any just using an ATM, machine. just of any kind. Like, it's never right. They always ask you a million questions that you don't care about. Like, how many people are using this thing in Portuguese? Why is that even a... Don't give me that option. And then you accidentally click Portuguese, and then you're like, how do I get out of this? I don't know what back is. <laughs> like, using an ATM fucking blows. And the only time you ever use the ATM anymore is for cover, I feel like. <coughs> it's the only time I ever use it anymore. That's fair. Or if, like, or, yeah. Or obviously, like, depositing cash yeah. if somebody gives like christmas time i'm pumping out the atm yeah, but other cool. than that it's all cover but yeah using dude. an atm fucking sucks yeah nothing <laughs> nothing makes you feel like you have no money more than when the atm is not working and you're like dude is it yeah is it my account is it my card and then you're like no, yeah it fucking sucks dude and then it's at the end it's like you want a summary or your checking account no i don't want a summary in my checking yeah. account yeah. i know i just took money out of there i don't want to yeah. see what it looks like now dude <laughs> and also, I think I'm out on the card locking in. Can we stop with the card locking in? Because I don't trust. I don't, dude, I'm on fucking 79th and Cicero, bro. This yeah. shit ain't safe for one. And two, right. I, I don't trust these machines to not eat my card up, you know? You're right. I've I'm never had out. it stay. I've never had it stay locked in, but that is definitely an irrational fear. Every oh, time really? It locks. Yeah, it's, no. yeah, I don't like it. Not one single bit. That's how all of these ones are. No, I mean like. Stay locked oh, in, and then you can't oh, get yeah, it after, and yeah, like you're yeah, fucked, yeah. and it's just locked sure. in there. That's yeah, that's a nightmare scenario. Yeah, having to call like the chase guy, the ATM guy <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah, he ain't you know getting there till tomorrow. No yeah. shot, he gets there same day. It's the fucking janitor. It ain't no. It's, it's, oh, I'm cleaning the toilets. Let me come get your fucking money. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, last one for dad. Um, yep. I'm gonna do. 
Mm, I got a couple that I like, but I'm going to go with uh, Pissing in the Dark. Pissing in the Dark. I, not that I do it often, but when I do, I never hit water. And it's just kind of, you're just like, fuck. Cause you're if I have to piss in the dark, I'm 100% sitting down. Ooh, that's, hey, that's not a bad play, dude. I don't, you know, my thing is I'm not cutting it off. You know what I mean? Like I'm, it is what it is. I'm just cleaning this toilet seat up, you know, cause I'm missing a quarter of my piss in this fucking bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Definitely didn't think about that one. Yeah. It's a tough look, dude. Have you- All right, Jack. <laughs> oh, can I stay on the pissing thing? I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, go I'm ahead. just rambling today. Uh, have we ever talked about like boner pissing before? Uh, no, we could probably do a whole episode on that. I'm sure. All right, we but could do ever- ten episodes on boner. Have you ever pissing. Been, you ever been fucking rocked up and you just lay across the top like plank on the toilet because you don't feel like pushing your bone dog down? Have you guys ever seen those fucking those pictures of like a hundred different ways to pee with a boner? No, no I haven't. You need to send it to us. So we go hilarious, yeah. dude. Talk about the episode one hundred. Gotta get him. Hell yeah! Okay, keep we'll that call. on the list. Episode one hundred. Oh, yeah. we'll, call it the go- we'll call it the golden hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Jack, Mister Irrelevant. Mister Irrelevant is going to be, and it's really between two of them, but. There's one I've had a lot of turmoil with as of recent, and it is locking your door. Like when you, like I I always have the biggest problem when I'm leaving for work and then when I'm coming home with groceries, I don't know about you guys, but I am a motherfucking one trip God. I ain't taking two trips. I'm not. Okay. I'm not doing that. So I always have to strategically hold my keys in one hand and then all 69 of the grocery bags in my other hand i have tiny little baby hands it's not a lot of real estate there for so many bags and then i go to unlock my door and for some reason when it's cold i know the reason when it's cold out all that shit expands so you can't fucking you can't just twist the lock you got to pull it back towards you then unlock it. No, that's and the I, worst thing in the world. I hate that. Oh my too. god! If I have to set one more thing down to lock yeah. my fucking what is this? Are are we are we living in a third world country with third world locks? I don't understand what the fuck the problem is, dude. It pisses me off to no end. I actually I verbally said something the other day when I was coming in with my groceries. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yep. This is insane. Yeah, the so, yeah. fact that there is no like open sesame system with uh voice activated door at this point is crazy. Or I'll, even I'll, give me a keypad. Give me a dialer. I'll add a wrinkle into that. Imagine having your groceries and then also having Max on the leash and trying to open the door. Dude, I used to fucking lose my when I would take Max out for a walk, mm-hmm. and I had stairs that went down right before the door, and so when yep. we were coming back in, I would have to unlock the door and then open it, and then he's immediately dragging me up the fucking <laughs> oh, stairs. Yeah, dude. Oh my god, I almost murdered your dog a couple times. <laughs> Max out here yeah. catching strays. All <laughs> yeah, right, sorry. shout out Max. Uh, we'll do a little recap here, Jack. Skipping ads, putting on shoes, doorknob grabber, and locking your door. Uh, Mike, removing a brassiere. Uh, motion sensors in the bathroom, just in general. Uh, breaking off graham crackers perfectly. Uh, pissing in the dark. And then Bob, putting on a bed sheet. Getting your phone stuck in the crack of your car. Uh, forgetting one last thing in the house and then using an ATM. Moral of the story is the Brennans had trouble with doors. <laughs> yeah, doors are a problem. Big also, problem. I want to just say this, okay? I want to say this. Say it. Um, this is what the text said, though. Okay. <clears throat> I have a good draft idea. The okay. hardest minor tasks in life. So just take that with a grain of salt, all the listeners, when you're talking about skipping ads uh, and stuff like that. <laughs> That's all, a minor got, task. It all, got, it all got tweaked at the end to throw Mike off, okay? I think, I right? think it all worked. I think it all ended up yeah, working I out. Too. I do, too. I just want people to take into consideration where no. everyone's board is at and why skipping it's where it's at. ads is I, a hard minor task. I think... 
I think the w- first pick in the draft was the worst pick by was far, not even close. Yeah. Everything else was fantastic. Great. Oh, draft. I fucking I surprised. Also, can we just say that this is the, really the most inconvenient, hardest minor task is threading a needle, certified number one, but who the fuck sews? I did. Yeah. For Christmas, when I bought my when I bought my uncle a fucking golf club because he's missing a finger, and I chopped the finger off and sewed it up. So then, because he golfs, and it, the finger would just dangle, right? So I bought him a glove, chopped the finger off, and sewed it up myself. No so, way. Yeah. So it took me like threading a needle is a bitch, eh? Three to four minutes to thread the needle, which is way yeah. too long. <laughs> well, dude, all three of us have chode ass fingers. Yeah, other uh, other high hypo- or other um, honorable mentions here. I had uh, check this. Andy was like, "No, I don't. I don't. I really don't. I have like I have pretty normal hands. I would say they're yeah, just what small. The fuck you do. They're just uh, small. Resigning into anything, I think, is a horrible task. Yeah. See, that is Dude, a great cash gets cleared. One. Yeah, get the fuck out of town. Uh, opening a difficult jar. I had returning anything. Retur- I'll never return anything. It just I, won't happen. Sa- Savannah returns the fuck out of everything, and I no. respect the hell out of it. I don't know yeah, how she does I mean, it. That's a, that's a commitment. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and it's nice to have a guy for that now. You know, yeah, like, I got exactly. a guy. He, this, yeah. this guy returns my stuff. For sure. That is dope. Um, uh, the, the thing that started this whole thing was plugging something into an outlet that you can't see. Yeah, this which... happens specifically at Savannah's house. She has an outlet that sits between the wall and her bed. Mm-hmm. And so I'm reaching down between the mattress and the wall, trying to plug this in. Can't see it. Yeah. In irate the entire time. <laughs> yeah, the entire dude. time I'm doing it. At the at the end, I'm like, I hope my laptop is never charged because yeah. fuck this. Dude, dude I get you just got to rip the bed off the wall. I was going to it like two and a half feet off. The wall. I was going to say, that's what I do. I'll fucking move my whole bed or whatever and be like, right. oh, dude. In my yeah. home, this will not be the setup. I can yeah. promise you that. Dude, yep. I, yeah, that is the worst. There's always been memes about that, too, where like there's someone fucking with you because like you can't see, right? Someone's fucking with you while you're down there. Yeah. <laughs> you completely forget like what an outlet looks like the second yeah, you reach right. down there. Yeah, yeah, it's like you got the European one trying to go into the American dude, one. Dude, and you're feeling, yeah, around, you're feeling yeah. around. You're like, this yeah. is where it is. This yeah. is where the fucking plug is. I've Why is this going I am yeah. the world's greatest detective. I can find the holes. Yeah, I can find <laughs> Any other honorable mentions? I got a couple, yeah. But uh, I would say putting money in a vending machine, but that's the same thing as the fucking ATM, just not as good. Yeah. Um, Dude, sweeping and trying to get that little extra very last bit. Oh, yeah. Dust that's brutal. Into the dust I just pan. kick it around. Yeah, I'll fucking <laughs> lick, I'll snort it before I try to get it in yeah, that dustpan because of how fucking hard it is. Get the yeah. blow just to fucking. Yep. Yeah. Now it's mixed up. Now it's gone. But I got most of it. Uh, and lastly, I was going to say, I, I was going to say, is parallel parking only because I have a fucking camera and I still kind of suck at it. And it what are you, a woman? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is a woman. He, he's scared of the dark too in his own yeah. hallway that he goes down every day. If you yeah. think I don't close my eyes at certain parts yeah. of my hallway, <laughs> add that to the list. Three, the three pussies: mm-hmm. Mike, Jim Harbaugh, and women. <laughs> Episode ninety nine is a wrap. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody, for listening again. Uh, congratulations to the national champions. Uh, of the world Michigan Wolverines Lions Rams hold your fucking nut sack this is going to be a fun ride and uh we'll get it we'll get plenty into the bears uh and what they're going to be doing in the draft in the next couple of uh next couple of months here but um thank you everybody for riding with us we love you and we will see you for episode 100 can't fucking believe that episode yeah. 100 next week peace Oops.